Hi folks, so today we're going to discuss loving kindness or meta practice. What is it? Hi folks, so I'm Doug Smith. I'm the study director at the Secular Buddhist Association, that's secularbuddhism.org. And today we're going to discuss loving kindness or meta practice. What is it and how did it develop? If you're interested in topics like these in early Buddhism, secular Buddhism, secularism, philosophy, that kind of stuff, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel, which you can do down below or in various places on the screen at various times. And at the end of the podcast, I'll uh, include a suggested reading, a, a good book that you might uh, be interested in if this is a topic uh, that interests you. So the practice is usually known as metta practice. Metta is a Pali word which is usually translated loving-kindness, that's how you'll usually see it said, or uh, another translation would be boundless friendliness. Some of us prefer the translation boundless friendliness because the word love and loving-kindness has, in English, suggestions of romance, or romantic uh, relationships, which are really not what uh, metta practice is about at all. They're about more a kind of uh, universal friendliness to all beings. So how did metta practice begin and how did it develop? We can't say exactly where it began or if, if, it, if it predated Buddhism. Uh, potentially it did. Maybe the Buddha invented it himself. We don't really know. But in the earliest tradition, the practice was relatively simple and straightforward. Probably the most repeated or the most famous early practice was to suffuse the four corners of the world with a mind of uh, loving kindness, of boundless friendliness. To suffuse the world, uh, the simile says, like a, a trumpeter, uh, a great trumpeter would trumpet his message to the four corners of the world. So you, you, you look in front of you and you develop this mind of, of loving kindness and you extend it to all the beings in that quarter of the world in front of you, then you do it to one side, then you do it to the behind you, then you do it to the other side. Suffusing all of, of reality with uh, a mind of, of loving kindness. In another sutta, the Buddha talks about directing this kind of loving kindness to a particular species of, of snake, and then to other species of snake, and then to all, you know, then to other beings, and then to all beings. This kind of practice here, and that, and that particular sutta, suggests another aspect of loving kindness in the early tradition, which is that it was seen as a kind of protective, almost a spell or magical incantation that one did to oneself. That is, it was seen in the early tradition as protective, so that if one had a mind of loving kindness towards a snake or two certain kinds of snakes, they wouldn't bite one. And there's a sutta in which the Buddha is approached by some of his monks who are getting scared at night when they go out to meditate during the, the dark, and he suggests that they use a metta meditation, loving kindness meditation, because that will protect them. Not incidentally here, metta meditation also works to, to decrease fear because insofar as we have an attitude of friendliness towards the world, we're not afraid of the world. Uh, having a, a friendly attitude towards the world is going to make it less likely that you are accosted by the world. Animals can sense certain kinds of bodily attitudes we have towards them, and so there is probably a, a grain of truth in the notion that, that by developing a mind of loving kindness, one is protecting oneself. Probably the most famous early Buddhist example of, of metta, metta practice is in the so-called Metta Sutta, which is in the Sutta Nipata. It's one of the earlier collections of, of early suttas. And in this sutta, the, the Buddha talks about developing this kind of, of attitude towards all beings without exception. And he goes through various kinds of beings, large beings and small beings and slow beings and fast beings and so on. The idea is that one is supposed to develop this attitude towards all without exception. And in that sense, uh, Metta is supposed to be a sort of equanimous mental attitude. That is, it doesn't pick out one group of beings that one is supposed to have friendliness towards as versus another. That would not be the correct way to practice metta. One is supposed to practice metta towards all without distinctions. And one of the very, very famous similes in the metta sutta is that one is to practice like a mother would have in mind the goodwill of her only child. We're supposed to broadcast that same kind of attitude of goodwill towards all of all of reality. In the later tradition, we find certain interesting innovations. In particular, uh, probably some of the most famous come through the Theravada uh, scholar Buddha Gosa's a very famous 5th century text, the, the Visuddhimagga. Now this is about a thousand years after the Buddha, so this is a much later text. But the first uh, innovation we find there is that Buddha Gosa suggests that we begin metta practice by having metta or friendliness towards ourselves. Now interestingly enough, that is not part of the early tradition. 
And Buddha Ghost, in fact, talks about this. He says that this is not part of the early tradition. And so he, in a sense, admits that this is something of an innovation. But it's an interesting innovation, particularly for contemporary uh, practice, because many of us, I think, as, as may be well known, have a problem with, with self-hatred, with, with negative attitudes towards ourselves. And it's very difficult to have a developed metta practice uh, with that kind of negative self-attitude. Interestingly, uh, Buddha Gosa's innovation, or at least the innovation that Buddha Gosa describes, is one that I think we can really easily take on board nowadays. It's an innovation that many of us will find very congenial to start with ourselves. Now, I mean, of course, there may be drawbacks, there may be reasons why the Buddha did not consider that we should start meta practice with ourselves. It could uh, increase our sense of ego. Potentially, it could conflict with the notion of non-self that we find in early Buddhism and all of Buddhism. It may simply be that the Buddha didn't consider metta towards himself or oneself because it, it seemed obvious that one did love oneself. It may be that it's not included in the early tradition simply because they just didn't consider it. Other innovations that one finds in Buddhaghosa's great text, the Vasunimaga, is that one, instead of broadcasting metta or, or loving kindness generally towards whole quarters of the world or towards particular kinds of beings, he suggests that we deal with particular people so that we start the practice by considering a teacher towards whom we already have very developed uh, emotions of friendliness, either a teacher or a benefactor or somebody who has done one a great deal of good in one's life. Then from that person we move to a, a very dear friend who again it's very easy to develop this kind of metta, this kind of uh, loving kindness because we have friendly attitudes towards them already. Then we take that attitude of friendliness and we move towards a person for whom we have no particular feelings one way or the other, perhaps somebody on the street, perhaps somebody in a store that we saw. Basically, we take a neutral person in our lives, and we try to, to maintain this, this emotion of boundless friendliness, but directed towards them. Finally, as, as many of us will know, we take a hostile person, a person for whom we feel hostile, and who perhaps feels hostility towards us. Oftentimes, in contemporary practice, people will say, the practice is to direct a feeling of loving kindness towards the hostile person. And some of us may find that, indeed, a very difficult practice, that it's difficult to maintain that kind of attitude of, of kindness and friendliness when the person is hostile. And in fact, the interesting thing here is that uh, Buddha Gosa realized this. And so if you actually read the instructions in the Vasudhimaga, Buddha Gosa suggests that we are to treat the hostile person as a neutral person. So he suggests basically that instead of maintaining this, this mind of loving kindness when we get to the hostile person, simply we try to think of the hostile person just as another person in the street, just as somebody for whom we have an equanimous state of not particularly uh, loving nor care nor hating and that I think is the first step towards gaining a, a mind of loving kindness towards this person because if we practice that way over a period of time we can at least see potentially in time we may be able to develop a mind where this person who we used to think of as hostile now we simply think of as neutral if we can get ourselves to that stage of thinking of this person as neutral then of course we can fit them into the to the schema we saw before at that point we can suffuse them with a mind of loving kindness. So I think we should see this as a multi-stage process. It's not a stage where we immediately go towards loving everybody, but instead that we, we start by uh, loving the people we can love or, or being kindly towards the people we can be kind towards, and at least trying to be neutral towards the rest. So I think that the, uh, Buddha Gosa's innovations are many of them actually quite useful and in a certain way advances over the early tradition, at least in the sense that they make the practice easier. They make it easier by countering our self-hatred if we have some, and they make it easier by perhaps countering our difficulty in extending loving kindness towards hostile people. Now, of course, this is not to be uh, extended towards romantic partners. So romantic love is quite different from the kind of boundless friendliness we're talking about here. It includes it, we might say, but I think we'll find that if we use a romantic partner in this in this schema of Buddhaghosas, the result will probably not be exactly what we're looking for. And so he cautions against that. Now, if you're interested in, in, in reading more, learning more, I highly suggest uh, this book um, by Sharon Salt called Loving Kindness. Sharon Salzberg is probably the leading teacher of loving kindness uh, practice in the West. She's one of the founders of Insight Meditation Society, IMS, up in Barrie, Massachusetts. A very 
very skilled and knowledgeable in these early practices. So I would highly suggest that book if you want to read more. So if you're interested in, in these topics of early Buddhism, secular Buddhism, and so on, please consider uh, subscribing to, to this YouTube channel. Uh, that'll be a good way for you to receive uh, more of these videos in the future. So once again, uh, thanks so much uh, for watching. Uh, I'm really glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're uh, enjoying these videos, and I hope you find them interesting and useful. Any comments or questions you have, do feel free to put them down below in the, in the comments box. I'm always really happy to, to hear any ideas or questions, thoughts you have. And uh, thanks very much. See you next time.